Hey guys, sorry for that. Uh, needed to go take care of a thing. <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm Belinda with Just Be Yoga, and this is our Empower Yoga Live Saturday morning. Who's here? I know that Claudia and Joe uh, had to go. They asked me to say to the regular crew that they had to go and um, go somewhere for the rest of the day. So they were in the basics class, which went a little over. So that I, um, y'all know me, I, I time. Except that today on time, I'm probably going to try to end actually around 1230 because I'm going to be leaving. Uh, I'm, I'm going to meet some folks. I've, has anyone been to Kensington Metro Park before? I'm going to go feed birds out of my hand. Wild birds, come land in my hands. Um, Kayla's got the space heater. Yes, after my own heart. Awesome. Okay. Well, this morning, what are we needing? What are we feeling? Um, talk to me about what's going on. You know, if you leave it to my, um, to my, uh, up to me, words, um, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, so yay. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Brandy. Yep. Brandy, Claudia and Joe, they're already gone. Uh, anyone, anyone? Anybody got any requests? Going once. Going twice. Okay. Nobody's got any requests. We're going to work on a vinyasa flow. If you are new to Just Be Yoga, please listen more than watch. Okay. So this is about you feeling and connecting in with you. Please don't go beyond your edges. Um, Please make a comment, write down anytime during this class. If you have any questions, something that you have a request about, um, let me know. I'm always looking up to see what's going on. I'd like this to be as interactive as possible, especially if you're here live. If you're hitting it on on demand, you might need to send me an email. Okay. All righty. Uh, we're going to get started. Why don't we start actually standing today? So good morning. Good to see the crew giving you all a great big hug. This that, That's about as socially distanced as we can get, right? This kind of a hug. All right, let's do it. There we go. Big hug. We'll come to standing in our mountain pose. If you need a block or a strap, and if you don't have a block, you can use a table. I'm sorry, not a table, but, but maybe a chair or a stool. Um, and you can have a, uh, what do I want to say, a scarf or a belt in case you need a strap. I had a strap, and, you know, I pretty much want to blame my cats because I don't know where it is. So, anywho, uh, good morning. Let's get started in our mountain pose. So we'll come up to the top of our mat. Let's feel our feet. Feel out where we're standing, how we're standing. Make some choices about how we want to stand. Let's let go of should. Let's have no should interfere with our practice this morning. So we're standing how we want to stand, what makes us feel the most comfortable, the most solid, the most strong. Where do we draw our power from? What does powerful feel like? Does it feel rigid? Does it feel stiff? Does it feel hard? Does it need to? How do we want to feel as we carry our power? Please listen to your bodies. Do what feels best for you. Good. Let's breathe in and lengthen upward. Root through the legs. Reach through the heart. Exhale forward. Fold. Be kind to the low back and the legs. Maybe start with knees bent. Breathe in and lengthen the chest forward as you lift it up. Exhale. Stepping it back to plank and lower down. Breathe in, lift the chest, be gentle first time, cobra, keep the elbows bent. Exhale, downward facing dog, deep breath. Ah, so the hips are up, and you could be pedaling the heels up and down, head is down, arms extending, chest extending, lengthening, tilting the hips up, maybe work the neck, check in. All of yoga practice is a check in. Check in physically, checking in breath-wise, checking in with our senses, checking in with our intentions. Let's lift the right leg up, point the toe, open the hip. What makes us feel powerful? 
uh, powerful in being open and being flexible. Bring the right leg down, lift the left leg, point the toe, open the hip. How do we feel side to side in our power? Do we accept our limitations from side to side? Or do we try to force our expression of power to be the same? Bring that left leg down, breathe in, tilt the tailbone up. Look forward and let's travel the feet up in between your hands. Look at your feet, make sure they're even. Half flat back, lift, exhale forward, fold, let the upper body go. Breathe in as we come all the way up to standing. Hands to prayer, lift the right knee up, extend that right heel. Step it back, stay on the right toes. Breathe in and lift, crescent warrior. Exhale, reach forward, right elbow, left knee, twist out the spine. Feel what the right leg is doing. Can you intend it to go back? Feel what the left leg is doing. Can you feel it bending? I was moving too fast. Breathe in. Spin the right foot flat. Windmill it open, warrior two. Inhale. Exhale. Hands down to the floor. Step to plank. Lower to elbow height. Back up, down dog. Breathe in. Breathe out, look forward, travel the feet up in between your hands. Inhale, half flat. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, let's reach shoulders down, feel the body. Hands to prayer, pulling that left knee up, extending that left heel out. Breath. Feel your heart beating, intend the spine up. Intend the right leg down. Step that left leg back. Ah, feel your stability. Feel your intention. Why are you on your mat? What are you awakening yourself to? Breath in. Reach forward. Left elbow. Right knee. That left hand could come to the floor if you want to twist from there. Twist. Palms together. Rotating the rib cage. What role does the left leg have to play? How do you know if you don't exert a little bit of change in that leg to feel it out? Breath. Spin the left foot flat. Windmill it open. Warrior two. Left leg is straight. Right knee is bending. Shoulders at ease. Inhale. Exhale. Hands down. Step to plank. Lower to elbow height. Back up to plank. Downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Look forward. Step, walk, or jump the feet up in between your hands. Half flat back. Forward fold. Inhale all the way up to standing. Can the breath move with the body? Exhale forward fold. Breath in. Lift the chest. Hands down, step to plank, lower down to your bellies. Breathe in, cobra. Hips down, elbows remain bent, or straighten the legs. Tops of the knees are off the floor. Straighten the arms, sorry, chest up. Breath. And downward facing dog. Breathe in, lift the hips higher. Exhale, look forward, step walk or jump the feet up. Half flat back, forward fold. Bend the knees, sink the butt down, lift from the belly button up, chair, forward fold, release. Half flat back, lengthen your neck long and forward. Hands down, step to plank, lower through. Breath in, cobra or up dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog, right heel lifts nice and neutral, close the hip, don't twist it open, exhale, step the right foot through, maybe help it up there, back foot flat, coming up, warrior one, breath in, what's lifting, what's sinking in the body, hands down, step to plank, lower through, breath in, lift, open your heart. What is the power you're practicing? Exhale, down dog. Are you practicing the power of less? 
Left leg lifts, breath in. Where's the less? Somewhere in your body. Exhale, step the left foot through, back foot flat. Inhale it up, warrior one. Where's the less? In your mind, in your desire. Inhale. <clears throat> Exhale, hands down. Step to plank. Lower through. Breath in, cobra. What's opening? Breath out, downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale, look forward, step walker. Jump the feet up. Half flat back. Forward fold. Inhale, all the way up. Let's rise. No strain in the body. Hands to prayer. <clears throat> right knee up. Sorry, I got a frog in my throat. Extend that right heel out in front of you. Pull that knee up. Find the top of that foot. Maybe use a strap here. Inner thighs together. Chest, shoulders, over hips. Right heel toward your butt. Stand in the left leg. Are you growing taller? Are you rooting? Breath. Start to push the back of that right leg into the hand. Sorry, top of the right foot into the hand. Pressing it back. Lift the chest up. Feel your breath. Where are you? Now try less. You've got nothing to prove. Trust the structure. Bring yourselves back to neutral. Release. Pull this right knee up. Step the right foot back. Find your crescent. Sink down. Sink down. There was so much up in that last pose. Can we trust that we can sink? Enjoy being able to sink into the energies of the earth. Accept the power of the earth. You don't have to do much. Let the earth take you. Reach forward. Right elbow, left knee. Find your twist. Some of you are straightening your arms. Maybe not. If we've got a lot of flesh in our tummies, it'll be a lot of compression. Might be a bit much. So you don't have to straighten those arms. Keep straightening the back leg, however. Revolving your chest. Feel the states of change that are going on. States of change in the left leg. States of change in the right leg. Can you ask the right leg to help the left leg? Breath. Spin the right foot flat. Windmill it open, warrior two. Reverse. Side angle. So that left hand can come to the floor. Maybe the elbow is on your knee. Breath in, thrust the hips. Ah, bringing ourselves back up. Claudia, did you decide to join? Hands down, steps to plank. Elbow height. Back up, down dog. Breath in. Look forward, step walk, jump the feet up. Half flat back. <clears throat> forward fold. Inhale all the way up. Reach intended. Hands to prayer. Pulling that left knee up. Find the top of that foot or ankle. Inner thighs together. Be where you are. Absorb all of the power of being able to go from exert to still and poise. Exert and feel the power of poise. The power of patience. Maybe start to press that foot into the hand, feeling that tension. And how much support does that tension provide us? Natara Jasana. <coughs> Sorry. Breath. Come back to your neutral space. Release, drawing that knee up into the chest. Stepping that left leg back, bending that right leg. Find your depth, find your sink. We had so much upward containment. Can we allow the trust to sink? Relaxing and stretching out some of those muscles that we're exerting. Breath in, 
exhale forward left elbow right knee find your expression of a twist driving that left knee back lengthening the spine where's your breath where's your mind what are you intending in your practice? What are you practicing right now? Good, we're gonna spin that left foot flat. Windmill it open, warrior two. I'm a little far back on my mat. Ah, shoulders down. Intend, what are we intending in our hands? Are we feeling rigid? Are we feeling like we're forcing anything? How do we start to embody the way we want to be. What power are we conducting? Reverse. How does it want to feel? What is its expression today? Where can we feel that breath? Coming forward, side angle. Thrust the hips forward. Stamp the feet down. Be in your root. Make space in your torso for your breath, for your heartbeat, for your organ functions. Ah, both hands down, step to plank. Chaturanga, elbow height, be in your heels. Back up to plank, downward facing dog, breath. Exhale, look forward, step walk or jump the feet up. Half flat back, forward fold. Chair pose, bend the knees, sink the butt, lift. Forward fold, let it go. Chair pose again, bend the knees, weights back in the heels, sink the butt back and down, lifting the chest. Where are you? Ha! Where are you? What are you practicing? What is the power you are practicing right now? Be honest with yourself. Are you just hanging on? Are you proving? Is that how your power is expressed? Where is the ease of your power? Don't make it be something for someone else. Feel what you have, what you have to share. Ha! Ah, forward fold, let it go, deep breath. Ha, half flat back, plant the palms, step to plank, lower through. Inhale, cobra or up dog, make a choice. What's opening, what's releasing. Exhale, downward facing dog, right heel lifts, breath in. Exhale, knee to nose and hold. Keep pulling that thigh up to the belly. Breathe. Step the right foot through. Back foot flat. Rising up, warrior one. How are you expressing your power right here? Practice something doing something less. And embrace that as a power. Soften into something. And let it show you what it has to show you about your power. Hands down, step to plank. Lower through. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breath in, lift the left heel up. Where are you? Are you in your right leg? Are you in both arms? Exhale, knee to chest, hold and breathe. Even though I'm saying holding, nothing is static. You're feeling states of change in your hands, your arms, your belly, your right leg, your mind. Step the left foot through, back foot flat. Coming up, warrior one. Do something less. Do something less. Embrace it as a power. Softening in, finding forgiveness, listening more than talking. Do something less. Find the softer side. Embrace it as a power. 
And hands down, step to plank, lower through. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Ha. Let's bring the knees down. Sink the hips back toward the heels. Maybe flip your palms up. We're gonna come up to standing on our knees and get ready for camel. Oh, I love how Claudia actually just came to pop in and just said that they will be here next week <laughs> for certainty. All right, let's come to standing on our knees, get ready for camel. Now, some of you may wish to have blocks alongside your knees and I'll show you how you can use them. <clears throat> Oftentimes you see expressions of people bringing their hands to their shin, I'm sorry, to their calves and maybe that's just not achievable but what you can do is use your blocks as such and what's great about that, number one, I'm going to keep my hips over the knees, hold myself accountable there so that I get to lift and I'm using the hands as a stabilizer, as a point of stability to lift and lift the chest up and over. Notice my hips now. I'm going to keep them coming forward. And I can bring the hands to the block. Let the gaze come up. Upward lift through the chest. Let breath into the belly. Upward lift through the chest. Soften in between the shoulder blades. Breathing and being in power completely open. Bear your chest. Find your fullest being and expression. Slowly bring ourselves up. I'm going to bring my palms down. Tuck the toes. I'm going to walk the feet in. Bend the knees. Bring the elbows, sorry, the armpits as close to those knees as I can. Plant the palms, bringing those knees up high, looking forward, leaning forward. That's as far as you have to go. Butt is up. Knees are resting on the upper arms. Elbows are bent. Chest is forward. Breath. And bring it down. We're going to do it again. Armpits. Armpits. Getting ready for crane. Feel this. So the limitations already can be torso or belly or the size of our thighs. All of that compression might mean just these elbows come here. So, I'm going to fall. So, what does that mean? That means that that just isn't your space. You might need to widen out, sitting up taller to try to get those knees here. All right? We have to accommodate what we have in our bodies. It doesn't mean that there are spaces that we can't get to. It means that we have to be willing to be honest about where we are and what we have to navigate around. I'm going to bring those armpits once again up against those um, knees, palms down, shoulder width apart, bending the elbows straight back, resting the knees high into the armpits, looking forward, shifting forward. Hips are coming up. Maybe one set of toes comes up. Maybe the other set of toes comes up. And breath. And bring the feet down, knees down. Start to get ready for your camel again. Feel your hips. Create just a fist width of space in between your inner thighs. Ah, all right, so your hands can either be getting ready for your block 
Remember what I showed here, hips over the knees. If you want to give your back support, you can bring your hands to the low back, pushing down and sending the hips forward, just so that you can keep those hips over the knees. And then upward, upward energy of the chest. Breath. Feel states of change. Feel maybe new degrees of release. Don't push for the release. Let things happen on their own. Notice fight and notice release. Knowing ourselves is a power as well. And slowly bring ourselves back up. We're going to do one more crane. Palms are going to come down, shoulder width apart. Come on to your tippy toes. Choose whether you want to start here or if you need to start with the hips up, bending the elbows, bringing those knees higher. You can stay here and just learn how to shift forward and feel that trust and shift back. Shifting forward and saying that's enough and, and allowing that enough to not be a concession to just say, yep, I am honoring where I am today and back. Some may come forward and say, I want to lift one leg. That's fine. That could be enough. Maybe you want to lift both and breathe. Reset if you come out. Breath. Where's your mind? Don't let pride and ego come into play. And bring the legs down. Good. We'll move the blocks out of the way if you had blocks. We'll come to sitting. Legs out in front of us. Clear out your fleshy bits. Sitting up nice and tall. Let's work those arms a little. We'll hook under and twist. Release, extend, hook under, twist. Can you stay active in those legs as you twist? Good, let's release, flex the toes, be active in the legs, breath in, exhale, hinge. Now, some of you like to use a strap here. I told you I can't find mine. I think my cat ran off with it. Um, you could bring your hands to your shins. If you're holding a strap, hold the strap as close to your feet as you can. Elbows out to the sides as you pull. Or you can just let your hands rest where they may. You don't have to pull at all. So everybody, let your mind go to the area of the body that's talking the most. Get to know the size and shape of what's talking. You don't have to identify it anatomically. Just... Feel it as a zone, as its own 3D texture. Squeezing your thighs, softening your spine. Feeling your breath. Now bring your attention to an area of the body that isn't talking. Maybe that you're barely even aware is connected to you at all. And just start to explore. What can I feel there? Can I truly not feel anything? And you'll start to notice a spark, just a small amount of awareness starting to grow. What is that that you're feeling? It can be subtle, it can be nuanced, but it's a part of you. Do you want to get to know it? Now let's feel our breath. What's going on in the breath? Is there room for breath? How much room does your breath want and can you give it to it? Maybe not all of it today, but just start to build that collaboration. And we'll gradually bring ourselves back up. All right, we'll bring the bottoms of the feet together. Inner thighs open. Maybe you're holding on to your shins. <clears throat> so
Some of you can thread and interlace the fingers underneath of the feet. It gives you a tighter clasp. And with that clasp, whatever you have, drawing the chest up while pressing the inner thighs open, you probably feel some stretching tension from the hold in the shoulders and down the arms. Lift the chest intentionally and we'll start a few neck rotations. So what is our power now? How are we allowing ourselves to engage, to define, to explore new expressions of power? Our engine, our source, and its expression change direction. Ooh, my neck, bruh. We'll sit up tall, breath in, exhale, hinge at the hips. Now, some of your elbows might be being used against the shins to press open, drawing the chest forward in the low back. Can you lengthen the low back? Drawing the shoulders back, releasing the neck, breathe in your groin. Don't force. Don't force. Hang on, guys. I got to put a on mute. Stay in your body, Kanasana. All right, let's slowly release, coming back to center. We're going to take the left leg out, keeping the right heel in front of the groin. Flex the toes, left arm onto that left leg. We're going to invite feeling some opening and movement, just some movement in the low hip, low waist. Breath, rotating that chest open. That right hand could just rest on your hip if you prefer. Your gaze could be down if you prefer. Breathing in, breathing out. And bring ourselves back to center. Let's bring the legs in. You can stay with the feet down, chest up. Maybe you lift the legs, boat. Breath. Good, we're gonna release, extend that right leg out. Left heel in front of the groin, spine intending upward. Maybe you're noticing some tension in this groin, in this hip joint, flex the toe, I'm feeling it. <laughs> Breath in, but that's my body. I'm not saying that that's what you need to feel. Exhale, over. Ooh, let's feel the side of the waist. Ah, if you don't want to lift that arm, you could always use this arm to help anchor this left hip. And maybe that lets us feel a little bit more space and lengthening. Ah, through the hip, twisting the chest open. Good, let's bring that back. We'll bring those legs back in. Maybe you're lifting, maybe you're keeping those feet down. Make a choice. Boat, chest lifting. Feel your tremor, your quiver. Stay right kissing at that edge. Get to know what your quiver feels like. Don't try to stop it. That's activation, activation, firing, firing, firing. Good. We'll bring the feet down, knees open, forward fold. Ha. We'll roll the spine up. All right, depending on where you are on your mat, you might have to move around quite a bit. I'm gonna turn sideways for a pigeon on this side. 
So I'm going to keep my right leg bent out here in the shape of a seven. I'm going to snake my left leg back. Left kneecap facing the floor as best we can. You might find that you need a block underneath of your right butt. That's really high, but I'm using it for demo purposes. So if that butt doesn't want to come down to the floor, give yourself a rolled up blanket or pillow. Left kneecap facing the floor. Now try to square the hips to face forward like headlight. Chest lifting. Breath is free. Power can be in how we face and feel different feelings. Some call that bravery. Some just call it being present. But it takes intentional, deliberate energy. And that's power. Can we lift more? From where are you forcing? All right, let's walk the hands around to the right and twist with the spine as upright as we can. Breath. Good, we'll come back to center and we'll come forward. Ooh. Now maybe you're just gonna rest on your elbows. Maybe you need to give time to transition to lower. Appreciate states of change. States of change give us opportunity to practice presence. States of change give us an appreciation for being here and not worrying about where we're going. States of change let us know what's going on between point A and point B. Let's gradually walk our way up. We're going to switch sides. So shift your weight to the right hip. Take your time. You don't have to be in a hurry. Bringing your bent left leg forward, snaking that right leg back. Remember, if you need a block or a pillow under your left hip, go ahead. Aiming those hip bones forward, sitting upright, feeling. Feeling the gradual releasing the gradual permission that the hips are allowing, that the thighs are allowing, that our mind and our breath are permitting. What's the state of your breath here? All right, let's see about a twist on this side. What does this side want to feel, want to give, want to ask for patience for? Where are the hard stops? Follow that spiral up your entire spine. What's going on midway? What's going on in the low spine? What's going on in different segments of your upper spine? What's intending to go up? What's rooting down? What's still twisting and moving? Good, we'll gently release, lift tall, and then see where the body wants to go forward. 
Breath in, breath out. Allow that body weight to sink down. Observe the areas that are talking the most. Observe the areas that are barely talking at all. Are we connected to both? What are they saying? Are they speaking differently? Do we know how to listen? What does anything mean that we're hearing? What's the fullest breath, the most peaceful, calming, fulfilling breath? Do we know what we're capable of? How can our breath transform our mind? Do we know? Can we open ourselves to that power? We'll gradually bring ourselves upright. Shift your weight to the left. We'll bring this right leg out in front of us. I'm going to invite us to bring our hands to a diamond. And we're going to bring that diamond to the low back. And we're going to lay down with our sacrum. So the space in between your lowest vertebra of your spine and your tailbone. Have that diamond under there and rest your hips down to that. And we'll draw the knees into the chest. Feel your breath. And then we'll send the legs straight up. Soften the backs of your shoulders. Adjust your head for comfort. Inner thighs together, legs together. We'll lower the legs down about 10 inches off the floor. Once you start to feel your low back peeling off the floor, stop. Breath. And back up. Now let's try not to rush it down or rush it up. We're going to slowly lower it down. We're going to arc it over, call that 3 o'clock. And then arc it over, call that 9 o'clock. Back to center and up. And lower it back down. Three o'clock, keep it low, nine o'clock, back to center and slowly up and down. Let's go to nine o'clock first, nine, three, center and up. What are we feeling in our low belly? What are we feeling in our bones, of our arms, our hands? Nine o'clock and three o'clock. Don't be in a rush. Control and be present through the whole process. Come back to center. Hover. Open the legs wide. Back together. Pike it up. Good. Open wide. Gather the feet together down at the top of the mat low. Open it back out wide, sweeping the legs back together above. Let's do that circle again. Pike it open, legs together, back open, up toward the ceiling. Legs together, lower it straight down. Three o'clock, nine o'clock, back to three o'clock. Nine o'clock. Don't breeze through six. Three o'clock. 
Nine o'clock. Good, six o'clock. Open wide, back together, straight up. Open wide, lower them down toward the front of the mat. Open it wide, gather them together up toward the ceiling. Release your hands, arms open wide, shape of a T. Let the legs drop over to the right. See if you can keep the legs together. Pike the toes up toward the right fingertips. Back up, legs together. Over to the left, back up, and right. Press your spine into the floor. Feel the role your arms play. Feel the role your spine plays. If you squeeze the upper thighs, you can ask your low abs to help. We are lifting a significant portion of our body weight with these legs. We've got to squeeze them together so that they can help us lift so much of our body weight. Breath with ease and composure. Think a positive thought. Who are you embodying right now? What power are you growing? Are you cultivating? Come the center. Ah, hands down alongside the waist. Bring the feet down. Knees up, getting ready for a bridge. Walk the heels as close to your bottom as you can. Feet are three to four inches apart. Knees are three to four inches apart. Ah, push down through the arms. Don't pivot on the feet. So plant those feet right where they are, parallel and rooted. Push down and lift the hips. Now, if you like, maybe wiggle the shoulder blades and upper arms closer together underneath of you. Some of you, your hands will come together. Some won't. You can just push the arms down to the floor. It's fine. Feel your collarbones. Can you feel that space opening? Lift the chin away from the chest. Freely breathe. Pushing down through the surface and soles of your entire feet. Both feet. Let the tummy breathe. Soften your faces. Release the arms. Lower the hips down. Bottoms of the feet together, knees falling open. Find your breath. Ah, let sensation wash through your entire physical body and observe. Are we releasing a power? Are we absorbing a power right now? Or is it both? What is going on? We'll bring the knees up, straighten the legs up toward the ceiling, arms down alongside your waist. This is Viparita Karani. Feel free to stay right here and just do this work. Inner thighs squeezing together, flexing the toes, driving the heels up, putting intention into those legs, but not rigidity. And then we get to play with, huh, what's the distinction between intention and rigidity? Is all of my intention rigid? Can I be fluid in my intention? Or am I afraid that I would let go and I would lose my intention? Breathe. All right, they can stay here. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. I'm going to get in ready for a prep to come up for Salamba Sarvangasana, a supported shoulder stand. Do not turn your head from this moment forward. If you're here in Viparita Karani in this dead bug, Press your entire spine into the floor and feel that engagement. That might be more than enough to just feel what's going on, re-engage and re-engage in our intention. If you're joining for shoulder stand, we're going to use the arms to push down. 
to hoist the hips up. Feel that collaboration. You've got to pike the legs overhead to move that body weight. So you're going to push down through the arms, hoist the hips, bring the hands to the low back, bending your elbows. Heels over hips. Find your breath. Now find the greatest ease that you can to maintain this space. We'll bring the knees toward the forehead huh, for Karni Pidasana. Maybe your feet come to the floor, maybe they don't. Breath. Release the arms. Use them for support as you start to lower the spine down. Vertebra by vertebra, by vertebra, by vertebra. Hugging the knees into the chest, maybe just coming out of the Burita Karani right now. Hugging, rocking, breathe. Ah, embrace the power of the breath. What can the breath do for you right now? Can it help calm your nervous system? Can it help slow your mind down? That is a power. Hmm, we'll bring the hands either behind the knees for happy baby, or you can find a clasp on your feet. Now, this is a really vulnerable and revealing pose, so if you would prefer to just hug your knees in, make that choice as well, all right? So do what feels good for you. You can get into more open or abducted hip spaces without having to sacrifice this level of safety, okay? So if you want to do this posture this way, that's great, tucking the tailbone toward the floor, feeling the hips opening. If you would prefer to keep your feet together, we could bring the, I'm sorry, yeah, if you'd rather keep the inner thighs less open, you could bring the feet down and angle the knees in and just feel what's going on. So let's all make a choice with how we want to engage in our groin, our spine, do we make a conscious choice about what feels safe? Do we know what feels safe? Are we willing to play around on our mat and feel and learn? If you want to rock, no matter what position you're in, you can rock. Let yourselves find a level of expression and playfulness. You don't have to know what you have to express. You just get to play. I'm learning, um, I've been trying to re-tap into my creativity, like with art, painting, and drawing. Um, and I realized that sometimes I wouldn't even allow myself to paint or draw this summer because I didn't know what I wanted to paint or draw. So I would just sit there as though I needed to have like a Mona Lisa masterpiece already in my mind before I started to actually dabble the paint. And so it was really an interesting lesson that I got to practice all summer in looking at how I hold myself back in what I feel expression is, as though I need to know ahead of time what the expression is. And we'll bring the knees in. Now, we can just drop the knees over for a spinal twist. If you want to feel a little bit more, especially on the sides of the thighs, if your hips are really tight, we can do a curtsy crossing of the legs. So I've just brought my right knee over my left knee. And I'm just going to rock here and feel a little bit more of a stretch in my low back. And my low back has actually been talking to me, so I just wanted to give it a little bit of attention. And now, either with the legs crossed or not, we're going to come over to the right for a spinal twist. Uh, if you did the cross, you might be feeling a little bit amplified stretching going on. 
from the side of that thigh, maybe across the low back. Breath. Sink heavy. Let the non-doing do the pose. And we'll gradually come back upright. Switch the cross if you had it crossed. And we'll go to the other side. Ooh. Find poses in your practices at home that let you practice the power of patience. that let you sit in a space of humility so that we learn how do we actually practice power? Are we practicing power or are we practicing dominance? Are we practicing power or are we practicing submission? Are we practicing our power? Or are we practicing forcefulness? And we'll bring the knees back up to center, uncross the legs, maybe forehead up to the knees. And we'll position ourselves for Shavasana. I think most of you have been here before, so choose where you want to position your body, whether you want legs up a wall, whether you need some support under your knees. The point of Shavasana, especially if you're new, it's just to be in a positioning that is still. We're practicing stillness and silence. Mindful and wakeful. Stillness and silence. Ah. So adjust yourself so that you have the least amount of distractions physically mentally and then commit to leaving the body as it is not a rigid stillness just let the body do what it's doing let your flesh yield to gravity Feel your bodily functions going on. Feel your breath. Feel your power here.
We'll start to wiggle toes and fingers. Maybe stretch or yawn. And when you are ready, after you've checked in with the body and the breath and the mind, we'll bring ourselves upright to a comfortable seated space. Ah, I left up Claudia's little note for you all. <laughs> Oh, all right. Check in with your body. How does it feel? What got moved? What got stimulated? What got renewed? How did the body and its movements and its energetic releases Awaken us to something in our thinking. Awaken us to something in our perception as opposed to our thinking. Hands to the heart and the belly or one or both. If you wish to join, single ohm, feeling the vibration that comes, but maybe ponder, perceive the source. Deep breath. Um, Answer the heart center. Namaste. That source is that inner power, the source of our power. And all of our actions, our words, and our intentions are a reflection of that power. I'm deeply humbled to be able to share practice with all of you. I'm Belinda with Just Be Yoga. This has been our Empower Yoga Flow on Saturday morning. So good to see the regular crew. Um, good to see Claudia and Joe. I, I guess that they came, they stuck around for a minute, and then they, they went off. Um, I am uh, going to go to Kensington Metro Park and feed some birds out of my hand. If you have never done it, just regular old natural chickadees and nut hatches. Um, I have had a woodpecker land on my hand. I don't recommend it. It's kind of scary. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to go for the little ones and um, enjoy a little bit of uh, the fall before the fall transitions to winter. So I do hope that you all have a wonderful day. It's been great to see you. Please practice. I hope that you're practicing at home. I hope that you're getting uh, your connection to what your yoga is. I have no doubt in my mind, especially my, my regular crew, that you have a connection to your practice. I hope that you're growing it, that you're deepening it. Come into the home yoga practice lives. Hit a couple of those on demands. Learn about maybe a little bit more about the limbs of yoga. Um, but I do hope that you're exploring it and deepening it for you because that's what it is. It's not um, about me. It isn't about even connecting with each other. It's a wonderful, beautiful benefit. I love it. I love connecting with all of you guys. But we're growing in that yoga practice. We eventually got to start stepping out on our own and feeling some things out. I have no doubt that you all are. All right, you all. Good to see you. Um, be well, and I'll see you soon. Namaste.